Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm gonna share with you the basics of animation in DaVinci Resolve 17. Let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve 17 right now, we're on the Fusion page and I'm gonna share with you just a couple of basic uh, tips and tricks to animate in DaVinci Resolve so you get smooth animation and you can start straight away to create nice motion design uh, in Fusion. To do that, I'm just first gonna bring one background, a second background, I'm gonna link them together with a merge and here I'm gonna add a mask on top of this background right here. If I just bring that up here, I'm just gonna change the color of this from black to white. Perfect. And here I just have my starting point to uh, demonstrate to you uh, some basic tips on how to animate. So here I just have my basic shapes and we're gonna start working with this. In this video, we're mostly gonna speak about the spline editor right here. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to keyframe and how to use all the tools down there in order to create uh, an animation that fits the project that you're working on. So first, to do any animation, you need to put some keyframe point. To do that, you need to decide on a value right here that you decide to animate. It can be the scale, it can be the position. Uh, for this example, we're gonna focus on uh, keyframing the position to show you how it works. So here, you want to start at frame zero. You're gonna just add one keyframe right here. And basically it tells to the software that here, this value now is fixed. We want this shape to be in that position at the frame zero. Then we're gonna move to the frame 40. And here, we're gonna just change the position of our square right here. And as you can see, it put another keyframe at the frame 40. Here we can see it because there is a white mark uh, on our timeline. And basically it says the same thing, is that at this specific point, the position of the square need to move from there to there. And now uh, if we play it, as you can see, we have our first animation. The movement is happening from this point A to the point B. All right, so that's good, that's great. That's just the basic on how to animate. Now, how we can make it smoother? How can we set loops? How we can set ping pong and so on and so forth. That's where all those nice tools right here in the Sprint Editor came into place. We're gonna use them to adjust this curve and to do a lot of interesting stuff with it. So first off, again, if we play it right here, you can see we have an animation. It's nice, but it's not smooth. Uh, it's linear. Uh, there is something that feels a bit rough to it because it's moving at a constant speed. We would like to adjust it and we're gonna make a S curve for that. To do that, you need to select all your key points right here, or you can just click on this button right there that's gonna select all your point in your spline editor. Then you can either click on the button right here that's gonna smooth that curve or hit the letter s and you're gonna smooth that curve right here then if we play it again as you can see now the animation is way smoother it's smoothing the beginning and the end of the animation now we're gonna go a step farther and play with the easing and ease out to adjust even more the smoothness of the animation to do that we're gonna hit the letter t on my keyboard and here as you can see it's just bring that bar right here with ease in and ease out again we're gonna select all the point of our animation and here as you can see if i'm adjusting the ease in we have some modification happening with the curve if i adjust the ease in it will adjust the top of this curve the end um, of those two key points and if i'm adjusting the out it's gonna do the same thing but here at the beginning you can also lock it in so the value stay the same for both of them and you have something that is equal both at the beginning and at the end we're gonna just bring it to 100 to show you the difference and what it does here we end up with like quite an extreme curve which means that at the beginning the animation gonna go smoothly smoothly very quick and then it's gonna be like slow and smooth again let's try it out and see where it is you see at the beginning it's very slow very slow and then when we start to hit this curve right here, it's going very fast and then it's slowing down again. And when you understand that and how the curve is affecting your animation, you understand 50% of it. Uh, it will help you tremendously to get a hold on this concept. As a rule of thumb, for most cases, what I will do, I will click that icon to lock in those values so they are the same. And then I will just choose a value between 60 to 80. 
and to me that's just a good rule of thumb for most uh, cases uh, and it gives you just something that is smooth at the beginning not too quick at the middle of your animation uh, and you end up with something that just looks nice in my opinion just so you can see the difference here is a side-by-side -side comparison of a square animated with a curve and a square uh, not animated with a curve meaning it's just linear as you can see there is a huge difference uh, in the look of it and in my opinion it feels way smoother and cleaner uh, with the curve applied now if you want to go back to something linear it's very easy again you're selecting everything and then you can just toggle here to go back to linear you can also just click on those points and adjust the spline here manually as you want click on the other one and you can just adjust it right there uh, and you don't have to go through the easing and ease out right here but as you see it can be modified just by moving those around so that's the very basic scenario that you're going to use most of the time you know uh, you've choose to have something moving or something scaling and you're just going to change like that value from like value a to value b in a smooth way that's probably 80 percent of the time what you're going to use now there is a lot of other options that you can use right there and we're gonna run through them. I'm gonna reset my position to zero and now we're gonna add uh, some new keyframes. So I'm just gonna start here to zero and we're gonna put that right at the beginning. Perfect. I'm gonna add one keyframe. Then I'm gonna move to 20th frame. I'm gonna move it around here. Perfect. Then 40. I'm gonna move it again. Then uh, 60 and I'm gonna move it again right here. As you can see now, if we click on that button, that show you all your key point uh, in one view. Um, we have a couple of different points. Now, instead of having something smooth, I would like to have increment. I would like my animation to jump from there to there to there to there. That's why I put a couple of different keyframes. To do that, I can again select everything. And here I have the choice to use those two right there that are basically um, steps. So here you have step in and step out. The only difference is that here, step in, uh, the value gonna appear there and just gonna change to the next one and step out, it's the opposite. You're gonna change the value straight away uh, and so on. So here, I'm just gonna start with this one. And here, if you play it, as you can see, it's moving step by step. We don't have anything smooth. It's just a rough cut between uh, each of them. Tac is jumping uh, straight up to the next point. So that's another way to animate. Uh, it's basically just having like hard cut between each of those points. And then you have your animation just jumping from one point to another. Now the next one here is reverse. Basically, we're gonna select everything. And here, as you can see, if I click it, it just reverse my animation. You can re-click it on it and it's reversing the animation. So if selected here, uh, we're gonna start from the other side and come back in that direction. And if I go back to the original one, I click it again, we're starting again from that side and we're going on the other direction. So that's another quick tool to reverse easily your keyframes. Now there is two other great tools that are uh, setting ping pong and loop. They are very similar, uh, but there is one main difference is that here, if I set loop, let's play it right now. As you can see, it's just moving and it's just setting a loop. It's starting from the beginning and we have the same thing on repeat again and again and again and again. Another way to go about it will be to just set ping pong instead. What it does is instead of having it starting again from the beginning, so having exactly the same sequence running over and over, we're just gonna go back and forth uh, by reversing it. And you basically end up with like a ping pong situation where it's just moving back and forth. So here, let's play it. As you can see, just forward then backward but the scenario like that is usually better with a smooth animation so i'm just gonna restart everything to show you quickly here i'm gonna add a new keyframe i'm just gonna go here to center add a keyframe and then 40 frame and move the position again perfect then just smoothing those two and now i'm gonna set ping pong again and now, as you can see, just going back and forth between one side and the other, one side and the other. Now, if I'm selecting loop, as you're gonna see here, it's just gonna start from the beginning again and again. So 
it depends really what you try to achieve. In most cases, I will say that ping pong will be uh, better because you will not end up with a hard cut like that. For steps, usually loops are suited better and for um, smooth animation, ping pong is suited better to have something that is on repeat because you don't have a hard cut right here like you see on screen. Here is a side by side of loop and ping pong so you can see how it affects the animated square. Now we have also another option, which is set relative. To do that, I'm just gonna reset everything and I'm gonna show you how it affects the animation again. So here we're gonna add another keyframe. I'm just gonna uh, keyframe here at the beginning and maybe uh, 10 frame. And then I'm gonna move it a tiny bit forward. You're gonna see why I just do a tiny bit because it's gonna take quite a lot of the frame. Here I'm gonna smooth it. And now once my two points are selected, I'm just gonna hit set relative. So what set relative does is that here, as you can see, it's doing something similar to uh, loop and ping pong. It's basically looping this part right here, but by adding the value uh, over and over and over. So here, if I'm playing it, as you can see, so here there is my first animation. So moving from left to right in 10 frame, and then I'm gonna do exactly the same, but starting from that new position. So here again, adding movement, again, 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 and again. And with that same exact rhythm right here. So that's three great options when you want to have something that is on repeat. You can set loop, you can set ping pong, and you can set relative. Now we saw this button right here, which is selecting all. So basically, uh, if your point are not selected, then you can just hit that and it's just gonna select all your point. So then you can just apply um, the loop, you can apply the set relative, uh, ping pong, and so on. Here you have another option is that if you don't want to click on this curve that you want to add a specific point uh, in a specific spot right there you can just click on that and then here you can just add your point and your curve gonna automatically move to this point now another great tool here is time stretch so once you've just selected time stretch as you can see it's just adding two bar right there and that allow you to readjust the timing of your animation here as you can see we start from frame zero and we're going to frame 10. But what if I want to retime that um, to end my animation to frame 20? Well, you can do it by just here hitting time stretch and then you can just move that. And here we're extending to frame 20 right there. Perfect. And as you can see, the point also moved from 10 to 20. And here our animation is not taking 10 frames anymore, but it takes 20 frames. So again, very great tool to retime your keyframe um, and to adjust your animation. Timing is everything when you animate, uh, you know, when you start to have like a couple of different animation in the same composition, it's very, very important sometimes to retime and to make sure that all the timing are right to have something that looks nice. Next, you have shape box. Uh, I never use it, so I'm not really, really sure what's the uh, use cases for that. But basically just put a box all around uh, your point and then you can just uh, modify uh, your curve using that. Um, I don't really understand what's the point of it, so I'm not gonna uh, speak too much about it. And then you have the last one here that is show key marker, which you basically add marker on top of where you have point uh, in your spline. As you can see here also, when you've selected one point, you have here uh, the time of the frame that is appearing, just for more clarity right there, but you can also read it at the top over here. So here, a quick thing that I forgot to talk about, I should have told that at the beginning, is that the value here at the top are basically the number of frame. So it's the same thing as uh, what you see here. So here, that's just frame zero. That's where our animation is starting. And then our animation is moving to the frame 20. Uh, and that's the same value that you see right here. Then the value that you see vertically are the value of uh, the parameter that you've set. Another interesting thing to know is that here, those boxes basically uh, allow you to just remove uh, some uh, keyframe from the view in the spline. So as soon as you start to have a lot of keyframe, it's nice to just uh, remove everything and work only on one specific uh, element. Or you can also just having uh, that square 
tick, which is basically here the keyframe is showing. You have the curve, but uh, you cannot modify anything. Uh, it can be very useful for you to try to uh, time two animation together uh, without modifying one. And that's pretty much it for the spline editor. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comment if you would like to see more video about how to animate in DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles created from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigastudio.com.